All right, let's go ahead and preview the rest of the games from this week. I've got a little spoiler alert. One of these games will be my upset pick of the week because I didn't have an upset <laughs> pick of the week yesterday. It's the Ravens over the Cardinals. Yeah, right. Yeah, Come right. on. That's, That's ridiculous. You'll never, even if it's the most reasonable selection, you will not find me picking upset <laughs> picks over the Cardinals. I am biased. All right, let's well get done. into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. That makes me want to say it's going to be cloudy with a chance of touchdowns. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> I, you know, you know what I'm looking forward to more than anything this week is this first game we're talking about: the Jets and the Patriots. After Monday night, last Monday night debacle game of garbage football, and last night's game of just garbage football. I'm really looking forward to a game with two great teams going head to head. So I'm excited. I'm really genuinely excited to watch this game from both a real football standpoint and a fantasy standpoint. Uh, very high uh, point total in this game, as you might expect with the Patriots offense. However, I you know it's not my upset pick of the week. I'd love the Jets to win the game. I think it'd be great. I love Todd Bowles coming out of Arizona. I like Ivory. I like Marshall. I like Fitzpatrick. I like what that team is doing. My my thought process here is I'm, I'm going to drop a stat on you. I, I heard this from John McClain, actually, of the Houston Chronicle, I believe. Of Die Hard? Uh, no. Every time I bring up John McClain, the reporter, you bring up Die Hard. And it's just because that reasonable. Guy, Very that, reasonable. That man should have to legally change his name. There is only one Look, John McClain. You're, you're, you're distracting me from the statistics. Sorry. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick, when he's thrown, I believe, 30 or less times for the Jets, they've won every single time. That's what... All their wins this year have been that situation. Lean on Ivory, make r the right throws, generally to Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker, and you win the game. Defense, play defense. The game he had to throw 47 times or whatever it was, they, they got beat, and that was against Philly. If the Patriots do what they do, which is score points against every single team in the league, no matter who they are, there's going to be an issue for Ritz, Fitzpatrick having to come out. Now, he can come out and catch fire and be okay. He's got really good guys to throw to. That being said, I just don't think it's going to be enough this week, I should, it should be a great game. It'd be neat to see. Let's talk fantasy. Who's the guy that you're most concerned about in this game where the Jets are a really good defense? They uh, are second against the pass, second against the run. They're, you know, other than Denver, they've been really kind of one of the pinnacle defenses this year and a playmaking defense, Daryl Revis. So the, the only player that I'm concerned about this week, and I would still start him, is Deion Lewis. Uh, we saw last week with the – he has a an abdominal injury – which that's that's if you have an abdominal injury, I mean you can't do very much at all. That's a that's a very limiting injury, and it sounds like it's still lingering around. Uh, and and will he get the workload? Is the other question. Legarrette Blunt had a great game. That was a was that just matchup dependent, or are the Patriots saying okay, we're going to get Legarrette Blunt more involved? I will say this: I have a little bit of concern over that injury with Deion Lewis that it could linger. However. Since we don't really know whether he's injured or not, I mean, he's still or, out snap blunt. Yeah, and so I don't, I don't have a problem with Deion Lewis. I actually really like Deion Lewis in this game. If not for that injury, and I, I'm not going to pretend to know, you know, how that injury is going to actually affect his game. Here's what I do expect: I expect Legarrette Blunt to have a poor game by comparison to the games he's been putting up. He's going up against a terrific run defense on the Jets. And so I actually like Deion Lewis a little bit more from a game plan standpoint because if they're not going to be able to run the ball that way, they're going to do those little screen passes. Uh, Edelman uh, is going to be running into Dar uh, Darren Revis. <laughs> Darren Revis. You, the, I want that, you, to just, that joke will, to just die. I will never. Because people are going to be confused. It's not a joke at this point. I think he has literally changed I, Darrell's name in his head. It yeah. is Darren Revis for now and forever for this <laughs> the guy. The State Farm agent, <laughs> yes. Darren Revis. Darren okay. Revis. Uh, but Darren Revis is going to be you know, on, on Julian Edelman. I still think Edelman's going to get his. Those short passes um, are, are fine. But Deion Lewis, from a game plan standpoint, is going to be needed against this Jets D. So I actually like him. I, I, I wouldn't be sitting any Jets starters, that's for sure, regardless of whether you're in Foxborough. I think, you know, the Patriots defense statistically, because they score so much, because they're on the field and they, they're a little bit um, – they're young and they give up points. Uh, even, you know, Malcolm Butler's been beaten several times this year. Uh, so I, I'm not sitting any Jets. Are you confident with Marshall and Decker? Yes. Very. Decker's my start of the week. And Ivory? 
Yes. Oh, yep. very good. Oh, I love Ivory this week. Okay. So, and Edelman, you're not worried about Revis? Not enough? I have not some enough. concern, but there's no way you sit him. Okay. That makes sense. So, let's talk Buccaneers at Redskins because that's going to be a great one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There I, are, you know, there will be red logos involved. I so, can tell you that. Yeah, much. This, <laughs> there will be blood. <laughs> this game has another one of my start of the weeks. Doug Martin coming off of the bye. Uh, I think one of the things that they have to have seen with the extra week is that they are a better team when they are getting the ball. Uh, when they're not putting Jameis Winston in the center of their game plan to throw and win them games, Doug Martin has looked like Doug Martin of a couple of years ago. And so the the Washington Redskins defense, they started out the year looking really good against the run, but they've been cut up the last two weeks. And one of those weeks that they were really good against the run early on was against St. Louis with a somewhat injured Trey Mason and, and no Gurley. So that was just a faux pas. You know? Let me ask you this. Would either of you consider streaming Kirk Cousins this week? I would consider it. I would not. I'd consider it. Because yeah. uh, I did consider it when I was looking at my streamers. And when I was looking Kirk through Cousins that, I like as a stream or Ryan Fitzpatrick as a stream? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Okay. Uh, and, and what's interesting about this game, uh, we have written down uh, 42 and a half points for the over-under, but that's actually the over-under of how many interceptions are going to be thrown in this game. Uh, I, take, I take the under. <laughs> Just barely. I want to win the bet. Just yeah. barely. Okay, so if Chris Thompson's out, who's the beneficiary in the Redskins backfield? They, the, the Buccaneers are very bad against the run, 25th against the run somebody's going to get the ball on the ground. You can't, like, Kirk throw it that many times. I tend to lean on the Matt Jones side because he can catch the ball. Where do you sit, Jason and Mike? Uh, I, I think both of, both of those running backs can have a a solid fantasy game. I, I'm not very excited to start either of them, uh, but I would still lean towards Alfred Morris. We know Matt Jones is coming off with the toe injury. Uh, he could be back to 100%, but toe injuries are like a calf injury it's just it doesn't take very much to re-aggravate that thing and then he's out but uh, and and they the team still believes in Alfred Morris uh, from what I've seen yeah with the expected game flow I mean in a low scoring game with two kind of poor offenses if Chris Thompson was around I wouldn't expect him to be needed much the way that you know the Redskins have been down so here I you know when I think low scoring games I think Alfred Morris and so uh, you know I, both guys will be used. I do agree that in the pass catching game, it, it's a bump up uh, for Matt Jones. Not I do. Okay. Yeah. All right. And what yeah. about what about Evans and Evans and V? Any wide receivers really? Evans, V. Jacks. I'd start Evans over V. Jacks. Uh, Jamison Chowder, uh, <laughs> Pierre Garcon, Jamison Crowder. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's Chowder. I know. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do. Chow dare. You know, How sometimes you got to dial those back. I, nope. I, so Never. I've got a legit question for you guys. How are you feeling about Pierre Garçon this year? Because, you know, when I watch him, I don't even know how I feel about him. After the game I just watched, I kind of have mixed feelings. He's been putting up a surprisingly decent year fantasy-wise, but yeah, I still can't he's put Marvin Jones. You know, Marvin Jones confidence level. Okay. So, level. so you're saying like wide receiver three then? Two, three, bubble sometimes. Certain yeah. weeks he's going to be in that two category because of bye weeks. But, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't love to play him. I'd be okay flexing him or something. And so Evans, VJX, give me some thoughts. Uh, for me, you know, Evans is the more talented guy that they need to get involved in the passing game. He had 17 targets uh, two games ago. It's going to be an up-and-down game with Winston, obviously. But this is a type of game that they can win. Um, so, you know, I'm okay starting Evans as a two this week. VJX is a flex play. Um, but I know full well that there's a chance one of the two isn't going to have a good game. So it's the unfortunate truth of the situation right now with Winston. A uh, little bit of breaking news I want to let you guys know. We talked about Stefan Diggs. He was back running with the first team in practice on Friday today. All right. So that's good news for him. And then uh, Chris Thompson was sidelined again in related to this game. Yeah. So I don't think that Thompson will go, but you'll need to check that out. I would, you know, if you need a desperate play, I'd play Matt Jones. I'm just going to say it right now. Uh, I'd, be, uh, I'd be willing to flex Matt Jones in this game because the, the defense is not good. That is He's not coming off an injury. Uh, so it could be, you know, we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the Falcons facing off against the Tennessee Titans. Is this the game that Julio kind of comes back around because he hasn't scored in a little while? People got used to those monster numbers in games one, two, and three. Does Julio Jones have a breakout game against the Titans or not? I think he'll have a great game. Personally, okay. I, he's had quite a while to really rest up. 
uh, shake some of those nicks and the bumps and bruises, get get back. What, 10, the, 10 days off now? Yeah. So I, I love Julio Jones a bit. Not that you ever dislike him, but uh, there's that calm. You know, do you have the confidence that he can be the number one receiver of the week? And, and I do. I do this week. Yeah, I, I expect him to have a, a very solid game. I don't see him being the number one guy just because – the the Titans I think are going to give give it up to Devonta Freeman. Yeah, that's possible. So, so confidence in Freeman sky high. Yeah, I mean until <laughs> further notice. How can it not be at this? If point? If you want to start a uh, pass catcher, I'm going to put it in that category. If you're going to start a pass catcher, are you starting Walker or Wright? Mm, from I, Tennessee. Uh, I would. That is correct. I would go with Wright. I mean, he, Wright has been heavily involved in the offense. He's he's kind of been up and down, but it, it, the, I guess the the other question related to that is Zach Mettenberger or Mariota. Who's going to be playing the the quarterback position for the Titans? It's a good question. Mariota's trying to be tough guy. If I was Ken Wisenhunt, I would step <laughs> in and say, "Sit down." Sit My, down, young man. Sit down, young man, and put Mettenberger in. Uh, I really hope it's Mettenberger for the sake of everyone involved. And if it is Mettenberger, then then to answer Andy's question, I like Delaney Walker. This is the third game in a row with one of my starts of the week, who is Delaney Walker at the tight end position. He's been getting good targets. The The defense for the Falcons has really not been able to cover the tight end at all. I think they're 26th against the tight end. And Mettenberger loves using him. All right.